Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dean, featuring today a one versus one on a Langare. Yes, indeed, we shall be fighting on Langare. We shall be seeing in the northern half, Lieutenant Levitt fighting for the 17th SS Panzer Grenadier Division goods from Berlin and pretty much the only Panzer Grenadier Division which in 1944 really sort of fought in the Normandy area. Opposing him shall be Donny Chan of the 3rd Infantry Division. Hurrah, sir. Starting out with a free engineer start. I mean, we are seeing more free engineer starts. The four engineer starts have sort of, you know, waned back a bit. They clearly weren't quite as viable for some. And instead, we're back to sort of either two engineers or three engineers, sort of more being the common norm. Although, again, it's no longer full dominance, but just two engineers. In the Wehrmacht, we are just seeing a two pioneer start up from Leutnant Levitt. False grenades on the way from the Wehrmacht quarters. And there we go. I mean, also note he started the barracks with one engineer swore, then finished it with the final one. Interesting method of doing so. I'm not entirely sure why one would do it. But there you go. Points having taken, the Wehrmacht is advancing, although already, I mean, Donny Chan is holding most, more map than his Wehrmacht counterpart. Right now on the way, and we are seeing an MG42 on the way to support the Fulks Grenadiers. Let's shore up one part of the front, front, not front. And there we go, victory point already being secured by Lord Nandlevit, that's pretty interesting. Points being secured, Donny Chan being a bit curious about how Lieutenant Levitt about Nurse John. Donny, perhaps he's been watching the propaganda cast. I mean, we have had Lieutenant Levitt on the propaganda cast before, if I'm not mistaken. Pioneers moving up against some engineers. MP40s finding a way. And the engineers aren't really doing much. Looks like we might be seeing a larger engagement up here. Foot rifle moving in. False glance and an MG42 turning up to return fire. And the rifle are pushed off. In fact, we are seeing some engineers hanging about here against the pioneers in there. Pioneers here. False gun is lining up. MG42 moving in. Close arrive and trying to stick to the edge of the map. Not quite wanting to get hit by an MG42 inside that building. Pioneers coming under fire. Additional rifleman squad arriving. So far, so little real engagement. Some minor skirmishes. All these riflemen are in a bit of trouble there. And there we go. MG42 fire. False gun is moving in to intercept a retreat. Rifleman already down to half health. Not looking good for Donny Chan's men. False guys moving up close and they are just tearing through the riflemen. There we go. Full retreat from the rifle. MG42 getting flanked though. Lieutenant Lavit got a bit too aggressive. And is now getting punished for it, but he is able to keep the MG42 on the field. Additional false guys squad on the field. And now the Americans are just simply charging it. Lieutenant Lavit will need to support it. Otherwise, that false guy squad will be pushed off with a possibly even heavy losses. And there we go, retreat. Oh, the one in year squad itself has been run off. MG42 taking up, taking up position in the house. Force guys moving in. Going fire. for the cutoff point of Lightning Levit on the 17th. Cheeky cheeky. And we are seeing an additional MG42 on the way. Pioneers hanging about here for some curious reason. Points being secured. And going to cut off the fuel from Donny Chan right there. That's at least something. But again, Donny Chan has cut off most of the resources the from Lightning Livet. Flamethrowers now being directed against the pioneers in the building right there, forced away finally. I've been also pushed away from that strategic point. Might be an idea to let the pioneers do that and then focus the false gun on the engineers up there. Looks like supply. Donny Chan might be landing up another assault on this position, although again the NG42 is in the house, that could be a bit more difficult. In particular, if Lieutenant Levitt were to sort of aid, place some bar wire, for example, here and here, perhaps here as well, so it's not quite as easy to sort of run up and sort of, you know, begin lobbing grenades or getting too close with flamethrowers. That could, in fact, 
eight Leutnant Levitt's defense is right there. Greatly again, but why can make a difference? So can sandbags, tank traps, and mines. And so far, we've seen neither from Leutnant Levitt. Most tragic, in fact, he just lost a Pioneer Squad. He has plenty of munitions, so again, he could place down several mines to make things much more difficult, much more painful for Donny Chan, but he so far seems a bit reluctant. While Donny Chan keeps to take away more territory from the Wehrmacht. Looks like we are seeing three MD-42 squads again, and not the most common thing to see, a bit more of an inversion of the three Volkskrieners. Two MGs, so he's taking up much more static approach. He's definitely just sort of having to de delay until he can get something a bit more nasty. Of course, question thing is, it doesn't always work. In fact, it can easily backfire if once there's been made a sort of breakthrough in any of the sort of areas, in which case Donny Chan is, I mean, Lightning Levit is in for a beating. And there we go, assault moving in, trying to hit the weak punch all the way. I'm seeing an MG42 covering here. And there we go, assault right in the south, being stopped by the in one MG42. Looks like no grenades from Donny Chan. We are seeing a full retreat. This assault did not work out. In fact, up here, all three MGs are protecting a certain area, but again, a decent assault could stop it. But so far, decent assault has not yet to happen. And it might have worked had he thrown in some flip mortars, perhaps with some smoke or just mortar rounds. Because remember, flamethrowers are not affected by smoke, so in that sense you can usually use that to sort of assault the position. But no supply, has, I mean weapon support center so far for Donny Chan. Five from the engineers here taking heavy losses. In fact, every one of Donny Chan's forces are taking a beating without really doing any damage to like none of its forces. Who are definitely doing some nasty damage. And now the troops here are getting flanked by false grenadiers, that's good. Trying to sort of increase the damage down, and there we go. Donny Chan is being forced off the field, but he is pushing again, at least wants to hold this fuel point as well. Motor pool going up, and I imagine we are seeing a creek bags on the way, if not already up. And a pack coming out, of course, since he's seen no upgrades or anything that could indicate that Donny Chan is not going straight for an armored car. But Donny Chan is not giving up. He's probably lining up for another sort on the MG42 there. The going for the cutoff point there to hopefully reconnect his fuel. Folks is moving in to counterattack. Flamethrowers moving in to push away. MG42 opening up in return. Engineers getting suppressed. Engineers getting run off. But at the same time, he is able to retake this point and thus cut off. Well, return some resources to his domain, thus giving him a huge fuel advantage in comparison to the Wehrmacht and Leutnant Levit. Bunker going up, pack ready, the Panzer Abwehr Kanone. Volkskrieg again could benefit, perhaps laying down a bit of sandbags. Sandbags are great, or for example he could have earlier, you know, wired this area off again, sort of ensure no direct assault over here, would have been nice again. But wire can make a difference for you. A huge one in fact, oh my goodness, and yes, burst into flames as the Flame for a tank. Got busted. That was certainly a bit nasty. And there we go, going for the cutoff point. We're seeing Americans pushing in. Trying here on the flank, but they're simply pinned by the MG42. And getting stuck here by another MG42. Keep saying MG42. Medic bunker on the way. Again, we are seeing a very defensive approach from Leutnant and a bit. A quite a static one, but again, he's also going to hand over a lot of resources. To Donny Chan, which can easily backfire. Now we're also seeing Donny Chan laying up again for a bit of a war attrition. We are seeing a medic station from him as well. We are seeing the armored car as well. Almost upgraded, though, has to be careful. No armored skirts could mean two Panzer Fouls could knock it out. And there we go, armored skirts are up. What a bit of happening all of a sudden. And we are seeing a second pack out, quite interestingly enough. And cars pushing up here. False plans moving in to try to stop that. Armored car, in fact, already damaged. And we are seeing Lightning David again losing more territory again. There's a lack of reaction from him. Although we now are seeing a mortar out, interestingly enough.
Oh my car falls to the edge of the map. False grenade. It's not really in a good condition to make an assault. Not full of health, not full of men. They should be pulled back, reinforced, and all that. Perhaps equipped with some MP40s. Again, the MP42s do provide a nice strong point right here, but again, Lightning and Navid needs to put out some pressure. I mean, he's doing a lot of damage to Donny Charm, but he's not really using it. I mean, he's essentially robbed the initiative, but he keeps handing it back to Donny Charm. He's seemingly a bit afraid of initiative, having to actually sort of make the decisions of his own, which is not really a good sign. Mortar pulling up. Granatenwerfer. And the Trier Center up. That's also going to help Donny Chan in the longer run. No supply upgrades as of yet. And we are seeing another attempt at the cutoff point. No response from Lieutenant Levitt. Although there's, of course, is the mortar, which could do something. And we are seeing a half track arriving. Don Chano is not hanging about, and we are seeing some mines right here from both players. Mines going off, still no real reinforcement to the false kind of ears. Half track arrives on the scene, equipped with machine guns ready to suppress any foul Yankees. Donny Chan seems to be perhaps changing his direct approach. Not quite so much hammering into MG 42 who's perhaps trying to hit, hit a perhaps more, at least perceptually weaker flank. That could work, although of course a mortar could also do a trick. Grenades, no sticky bombs. Nice defense, yes indeed, but again, I mean, Lightning David is himself at the same time rather limiting his approach. And of course also giving Donny Chan plenty of time to sort of scope out the defense and sort of attack them. I mean... That's sort of the problem with a defense like this, you're pretty much just showing them everything and then of course allowing to easily plan what to do. I mean, this is pretty much once this defender is gone, there's nothing else, there's no numerous lines, there's no p positions to sort of fall back to. And again, that's a problem, again, there's no barbed wire, no, no real fortifications. And again, that's really going to bite Lightning and Levine in his ass if he's not careful. half tech supporting a false gun here, Assault getting sticky bomb though. Oh dear, why didn't he keep it behind the Fox to support them? Or at least let them support it. Uh, way heavily damaged. A half track coming up for Donny Chan, and there we go, the half track went down. You know, really sound tactics displayed right there by Lieutenant David. There we go, the half track is out. The M3 half track used by the Americans, used by the British, and also used by the Soviets. It was pretty much the Allied half track of choice, since there weren't really many else. And a unit down. Oh, we are seeing a assault, but we are seeing a pack up as well. Clearly, Lightning and Elite was in this case prepared, but the pack just can't hit. My goodness, have they been drinking on the job again? Ready to go. Anyway, so half track man with a gun, that's good. The 50 caliber mounted on the half track actually does quite decent damage if you know how to use it. Where we Armored car getting repaired, no doctrine as of yet for Donny Chan. We are seeing our weapons watch under up. A bunk mortar could do some tricks in blasting through again with some smoke. It could really make it much easier. Could also clear out any anti tank guns that's allowing any sort of rush past them with the half track, for example, as well. But it is pretty rare track to see players sort of use smoke, tragically enough. Troops now getting shot at, pinned. M3, ready. Not sure what he's intending to do over there now. And again, what's used for the Soviets, they also used the sort of smaller variant called the M3 Scout Car, which at least could sort of be used by a tra as a transport as well. Some fun little facts there. Now we are seeing the mortar soon done. Meg stays in picking up a few wounded. Things seem to be slowing down again.
Off track, moving up. And coming under heavy pack fire. No idea why he sort of kept it up that far. And there we go. The half track went up in smoke and flames. Not really well planned that by Donny Chan in that case. False guns advancing up. Veteran 22 for the infantry. Mortars landing on the MG. Doing a bit of damage here. One kill so far. Medic spinning up the wound, and we are seeing the false guys moving in, trying to force away the MG42. Oh, that was. How? German mortars are caught. The kill knocking up the entirety of the mortar squad. And it looks like the false guys could be going down. No, they do manage to retreat for now. Armakar, the man, to place itself in the way, but no. False guys get away. And we are seeing infantry up. We're seeing artillery chosen. Artillery. Schweres. And it's been called in right on the mortar. And a direct hit kills all three. Pioneers taking heavy losses as well. Medics getting blasted to bits. Assault continues up here. Despite everything, the Germans are not retreating. Hack gets the armored car and Donny Chance infantry is getting absolutely gunned. Down, medics are running everywhere. And this is definitely some pretty serious carnage. I'm down. One squad of false carriers holding the line, supported by quite a bit of machine gun fire, though. Still some heavy losses on both sides. Mortars gone, half tracks gone, armored cars, and everything else in between. And we are seeing a fresh mortar up for Donny Chan. That's good. He's not just giving up just because he got one killed. Pax needs to be careful though. And of course, we are seeing the defensive doctrine for the Fatherland flashing above these false grenadiers. Decreasing the damage thing again, more are getting pushed back. And we are seeing a rifleman squad reform for Donny Chan. That's definitely going to help. That means he does have now five squads of riflemen. Which about when all fully are fully reinforced, that's 30 riflemen. That's definitely going to cause some pain. Playing for us, trying to clear out the MG42, but again, Donny Chan might want to consider sort of spreading out his approach a bit, you know, trying to hit the flank as well. I mean, again, sort of, you know, forcing Mr. Leutnant a bit to actually spread out. Instead, he does seem here to get sort of a bit more comfortable with your the hammer your head into a wall approach. I've been seeing out on the flank, Pioneers are in the way, Veteran 2 1, which of course will also help the MG 42s, increases their accuracy, making them that much more lethal. Still no supply upgrades. Mortars at the butt bombarding the MG. Oh, there we go, MG squad down. We've lost to the Wehrmacht and the 17th SS. Artillery support is now available. We are see, hearing the artillery is now more available directly on map, which could definitely prove to be a huge problem for Leutnant Levitt. A fuel point is being seized. Folks can hear down. Another MG in the house. More to recruit. Donny Chan's infantry getting gunned down. Supply lines are broken. We have territory out of supply. There we go, German mortar firing, American mortar firing, well, medic down. Falcon is actually charging into this mess, not really good. Mortar fire on MG and the other mortar. And there we go, American mortar down again, that's some pretty low survivability on that mortar in this case. Not really good handling by Donny Chan, I think.
No, 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 is still holding up, but he needs to be more aggressive, he needs more infantry, and he needs to try and take away more territory from Donny Chan. But he's simply being way too passive, and now he is going to get punished. The mortar has, the howitzer has arrived, in fact. Oh, so far it's not managing a single kill. Losing ground out there. Still nothing. Come on. Pioneers almost dead as they were hit. And there we go, anti-tank on blown to bits. Defense has been chosen. We are now seeing a Sturm Armory out, calling upon the heavy armored car to schwere Panzer Spiewagen. Rathman quickly getting suppressed again, but again, Lightning Levit really needs to sort of get moving. He needs to be more careful now, since, of course, if he's too dug in now, of course, he'll just be an easy target for the artillery. So, of course, question is will Lightning Levit, having gone defensive, actually be able to sort of shift doctrine or will sort of play style sufficiently enough? And there we go, more heavy artillery. MG forced away, pack down. Well, the final end goes up again, rather than trying to flank in. Oh, I can't doing what little he can. Might be an idea to get some veterans for that as well. No, he's getting veterans too for support units. Would recommend something for the armored cars since that actually decreases the damage it takes. And there we go, folks. Going squad almost blown to bits. MD42 force back again. Looks like, in fact, he's got a replacement one. Do be careful on the bit again, you need to get aggressive, you don't need to set yourself up as an easy target for that howitzer which is already gained veteran to one. And he is getting torn apart by Volkskan and armor car fire, the German mortar now veteran to two fires into the packed crude as just was killed. Engineer squad down, sticky bomb on the armored car again, veteran to one would help. Engineers rising up, lots of machine gun fire, riflemen. Oh dear, so much carnage. Armored car already heavily damaged. The mortar keeps raking it up. 14 kills. Medics dragging in the wounded. And the pack got wrecked. That pretty much means that Lloyd and Levitt is without anti tank assets. Should Donny Chan feel interested in hammering him with something armored? Medic station getting damaged as well by the German mortar, the Granatenwerfer. Vier unter dreißig, eight centimeter. Though not the biggest mortar the Germans had, that would be the one hundred and twenty millimeter mortar, which was essentially a copy of the Soviet one. For the final line up again, again not a lot of infantry from Lightning Levit. Again, it's a much too passive approach, and again not something I would recommend. And Fultz gonna squat down. Oh wait, no, that was a mortar squad, but still a pack out. He's again not really wanting to sort of risk any sort of vehicular nonsense. Still, more infantry would also work. And with that artillery, I would recommend that he actually tries to go for a heavy rocket barrage, save up munition for that, and then just essentially. Knock out that Howard, sir. Otherwise, he's going to. Hang on. All right. If you ho hover it over the crew, you get told it's a 25-pounder gun, Howard, sir. Silly. It looks like Lightning and the Beat might be trying to go for the cutoff point, but again, he's lacking the infantry. Again, he needs to be aggressive. He needs to be it. Another armored car on the way. Still no veterancy for it either. Come on, like none of it. Get your act together. Get some rocket barrages. Attention. Knock out that Howard, sir. Small force moving in to deal with those false grenadiers. I mean, it is odd he's gotten veterancy too for them when he barely has any infantry, anyways. Fultz going to take heavy losses, might be pushed back, Engineer could be going down, Engineer squad, no, yes! Armored cars roll into town, MG42 setting up, but it's a bit exposed, getting flanked already. Oh, the MG42 in the building is covering, Sticky Bomb on the, and we are seeing artillery now. 
He's calling in a registered artillery barrage on a single rifleman squad. Are you daft, Lieutenant Livid? What an absolute waste of munitions. You should have waited for the heavy rocket barrage, then knocked out the howitzer. Priorities, man. Priorities. Always prioritize targets and essence, you know. And in that case, I would say the howitzer, which is pretty much making a mockery of your plan and actually being slightly defensive in a game that requires aggression should be knocked out otherwise you're going to simply get hammered out although we are finally seeing some grenadiers Rifeman taking losses again sticky bomb on the armored car immobilized making an easier target for the artillery still no veterans you for the armored cars either come on lieutenant show that you are a true German officer Full gun is moving forwards again, going again for the cutoff point. Lieutenant Limit does seem to be not an awfully imaginative commander. Rather than going for the cutoff point, coming under heavy fire, armored cars, false grenadiers, tearing through the poor fellows as they run the gauntlet of Germanic doom. Raven over here again, running into a problem, getting pinned down, anti-tank and finding where the building. Anti-tank guns can be used fairly reasonably well to knock down buildings. And we are seeing BAS up for Tony Chan, increasing the firepower of his rifleman grenadiers, grenading. But they are simply outnumbered, they need to retreat. Rook Sug Mena, artillery against the central victory point, forcing the false grenadiers to move, but the grenadiers need to retreat. Carnage, doom and gloom. Armor car hits the Greyhound mine that was laying down there much, much earlier. Getting absolutely blown up. Again, Veteran G1 might actually be caught to survive a bit, but again, not none of it doesn't seem to be fully thinking through his strategies. We are seeing Rifle Wing. We are seeing some usage of heavy cover. That's fancy enough. But they need to stop it while they're under fire. That's not going to help. Four sixth force. Don't continue doing it, Lieutenant. And not really going to do much here, so at least try to get sort of get back at the first, so at least there's a chance of it helping. Veteran C3 for the infantry, increasing health. That actually makes folks kind of somewhat tough. And there we go. Five rifleman squads. Ten BARs converging on these folks. Kind of they just need to retreat. They stand no chance. And one folks going to die. Again, too late to retreat. Building has collapsed. And we are seeing, in fact, two MG42s down. I mean, Lieutenant David has been absolutely thrashed again. Poor execution of a defensive strategy. Again, not really realizing what the things would require. Not really good in shifting and certainly not good at prioritizing. Grenade against the rifleman. Getting a few armored cars holding out as they can. Barely infantry left. Barely anything left. More artillery being directed now just against the medic bunker. And units inside the bunker are actually reasonably safe against artillery and whatnot, and this of course collapses. In which case they're fucked. But carnage, death everywhere, chaos as things are falling apart for the 17th SS. Rifleman getting shredded apart. More artillery against the bunker, might be an idea to actually retreat before it collapses. Medic station could be going down, but it's already been giving Donny Chan quite a bit of infantry. And there we go, medic bunker is lost. A gun the escort has been trained. And no, he's not going for the rocket barrage, he's going for a flag gate hit, which is going to do him absolutely nothing. I mean, there's no armor, and, and a flak 88 Ooh, encounter is, is pretty terrible against infantry Forward, after the moment. latest patch. I mean, it serves no purpose whatsoever. Not really strong handling by Lieutenant Levitz, I would have to say. I mean, he's clearly no novice, but I mean, he's not really strong when it sort of comes to long-term thinking and shifting about, you know, knowing what fits here and there. More today against this point, and again, I mean, building a bunker in the exact same spot as the previous one is not good. And usually, 
when you are facing on map artillery and usually I've been doing that just in case you place your bunkers behind buildings or both cars why because the buildings and the both cars can absorb artillery fire meaning it takes a lot more artillery fire to actually knock out one bunker it can make a huge difference plus it also ensures they can't just walk up with an anti-tank gun and fire away there are reasons for why I suggest these things and discuss it and again going for the cutoff point although he doesn't have this one so oh wait never mind he's going for that one yes there we go resource being floated now kind of gears are just getting pushed out armor cars as well no cancelled Can he should get a heavy rocket barrage no matter the cost it ought to be his main priority he ought to sandwich whatever vehicles he can find turn it towards the greater course of again a heavy rocket barrage knock out that Howard so he needs to knock that out if he can do that he can pretty much win this game failure though means well he's yeah in trouble Postman is pushed away, simply too many riflemen. They're losing territory. Bunker taking heavy fire again, not really creative placement. MG42 still there, getting reinforced from the bunker. And rifle. No, he's pushing back. Troops going down. Lots of grenadiers now, no, the 17th are. Trying to push heavily. More artillery against the medic bunker. That's not going to hold. There we go. In fact, another medic bunker down. Carnage, carnage everywhere. I do believe Lightning and David will serve on the Eastern Front after this. Leading some penal company if he's not just been made a part of it. Yeah, yes, this has definitely been some poor prioritizing on his part. I mean, pretty much every other Wehrmacht commander who's worth his salt with gone defensive, if he's gone defensive, would have called in a heavy rocket barrage on that howitzer as soon as possible. In particular, since he's pretty much close also to the Trier center, which also means he could have gotten two f birds with one stone, or in this case, two nasty Allied artillery targets with one heavy rocket barrage. Grenades getting locked, Grenadiers taking heavy losses, we're probably going to see more artillery. False Grenadiers now getting trained. False Grenadiers, ladies and gentlemen. MGs barely avoid getting hit by artillery, that's one see two. And the heavy losses keep incurring. Riflemen are taking heavy losses, but again, they're probably not taking as heavy losses as Lieutenant Levitt's forces. The 17th in this sector is getting absolutely grounded down. We are seeing five rifle squads, so there are probably having some losses. A new medic station going up for the Americans and the 3rd Infantry Division. Interestingly enough, Donny John is not bothered with the rest of the doctrine. He's pretty much only cared about the artillery. He doesn't really need anything else because, again, Lloyden and David is fighting from a purely defensive perspective, which is rather making it a lot easier for Donny John to deal with him. Since he knows he doesn't have to worry about Donny, I mean, Lightning a bit, really attacking him and doing damage. And again, that's sort of the thing you should not be doing against the Wehrmacht. I mean, official Wehrmacht doctrine always said temporary is a temporary state. You should always be on the offense, always counterattack or something. But sadly, Lightning a bit is not really fighting out of that sort of perception, which is rather hurting him. As Donny Chan keep flashing against him as the waves against some rocks. MG squad down. Lieutenant David is getting absolutely shattered. And he is moving up, going to grenade. Oh no, oh no, and the pack again, not leading much. More artillery, although in this case not causing huge damage as of yet. More grenades. Interestingly enough, there's been no attempt by Lieutenant David to actually use an LMG-42 to perhaps you know, increase the five of his grenadiers a bit. But again, he should have 
as his first priority knocked out that Howard, which is now veteran C3, which means it can fire pretty damn often. And now Johnny Chan's going to make it even harder for Lloyd and the Witch to come back by laying down a medic's machine gun emplacement again. No veteran C for the armor car, and there we go, Sticky Bomb damaging the engine. I mean, this is quite clearly falling apart for Leutnant Levitt. He had a strong start and then he sort of failed to actually use it. Which was pretty much his huge sin. And Titang and Gart sorted out for the Grenadiers. You are seeing a small move up here by some rather wounded infantry. Anti-tank gun recruit, the pack is no more the pack, it's not an AT gun. And the heavy armor car got wrecked. Grenadiers in trouble with rifle with BARs, although they are veterans of free and that's much tougher. Grenade getting dropped against the rifleman. Losses. Got more rifle number you know they're retreating in fact. Oh fraps. Come on, fraps be nice. Not sure why Fraps is acting up all of a sudden. Gets like that from time to time, I fear. And another huge push up by Donny Chan again. The situation for Leutnant Navid is pretty much over. He's sort of just fighting to sort of minimize the blow, the damage to his own ego, I think. Or is he really fighting to hope to perhaps drain out Donny Chan with a few remaining victory points? It could work, I suppose, but he needs to get his act together. He needs to stop the howitzer. He needs to deliver some proper damage. Ganae's getting knocked at Libitum. Ganae's still getting returned. Not going well. And another rival score has been reformed. MG42 turned against its former German masters. This is definitely not looking good for the Germans. Desperately fighting to contain the situation. But they are failing at every step and turn. More grenades getting locked. Falcons getting forced out into the open. And they are going to get gunned down in seconds. Enemy unit and there we go. Another Falcon squad completely executed. No more screaming for help. But there is none. Bangas going up in a desperate attempt to sort of, you know, turn around the war of attrition, but it's simply too late to get that many medic bunkers. He should have done that early and again. He should place them behind buildings. <laughs> it matters, man. It is a huge difference. Looks like another Canadian force moving out. 16 men. The best that Leutnant Levitt can muster. Not further equipped though with any weapons. He charge out for the fatherland. Hoping to redeem his honor and possibly save himself from a trip. <laughs> and here of course we see an attempt to sort of, you know, draw in the Gandhias, you know, not throw it at their feet so when the horde moves in, it blows up in their faces. Sadly though, Leutnant Levitt was in that case a bit sharper than that. Bunkers going up, bunkers going down. This is Bunker Mania. But it's not working out for Leutnant Levit, it's, it's essentially just a huge manpower sink. He needs to continue though, he needs to stop blobbing up, he needs to go for that victory point. Hold that one, no matter the cost then. But can Leutnant Levit do so? And he must have at least five grenadiers, which of course is a lot of man persons. I'm pretty sure not all came from medic bunkers. And there we go, going for the victory point, Howard sir. Doing what? And pack also ready again. Rifleman Hall moving towards the west. Gonna need to dig in. They need sandbags, barbed wire, anything to prepare themselves for the American counter attack. But again, Lloyd and Livet seems absolutely oblivious of barbed wire sandbags. And there we go. The rifle are charging in without issue. Grenades getting lobbed. Rifleman taking minor losses. More grenades going down, but the others are getting slaughtered. The East has collapsed, the West not doing much better. 
Grenadiers doing what they can, they do manage to temporarily contain the situation, but not without losing an entire squad of Grenadiers. Again, but why sandbags would have helped. And what is the German player now doing? I have no idea, but it's probably not going anywhere. In fact, four Gunnier squads left, one false Gunnier squad. Now he's actually moving towards the center. He's, he's not even trying to hold the victory point he just took with so heavy losses. But again, he's lost the other one. He can't hold anything. Again, he needs to deliver a blow, but he can't. He keeps losing men to that howitzer with 33 kills. And the MG42 turns against the Grenadiers, gets grenaded, but not really causing any huge problems. They're still retreating just in case. More false grenades now arriving, more Grenadiers. Not just false Grenadiers. Grenades getting dropped left and right. Huge losses for the Grenadiers. Several might be even going down fully. And this could be very well the last assault. The last push, and quickly the forces are already waning. Down to two Grenadier squads and a full Grenadier squad to continue the assault. He's already lost all victory points. He's lost most of the maps, and he's lost any confidence that high command might have been having in him. Let's just speed up these last few minutes. Before Fraps decides to throw another fit. Hacked the troop for no apparent reason. Not really that Donny Chan is using any vehicles. Grenades getting locked again, wasted. Too light, I'm not sure, but I mean, not really a good handling by Lightning and Levit. I mean, really, it was a spectacular failure of Amak Commander who tried to go defensive but rather fail to go properly and even prepare himself properly again no bar wire no sand packs barely any mines that's uh, those are some pretty huge faults but also the fact of course he rather set himself up to you know again be easily artillery and easily be pushed off when it finally happened again not very strong handling and again there was an absolute lack of aggression until the final end where it was pretty much too late Donny Chan on the hand, well handled with the mag station, well handled with the artillery, grenades, sticky bombs, mortars, everything else. He just kept up the pressure, kept lightning a bit contained, although that wasn't really hard work. In this end, though, it was pretty much lightning a bit who was completely to fault for this loss and not even veterancy for the armored car. So there you go. Do hope you enjoyed this game. If you did, why not subscribe to your friends? And if you didn't, well, why not send in a replay of your own? This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.